Yeah, I'm losing my edge. We've been talking a lot about metals recently, and that's because metals have been moving and they continue to move. And today is another outlier move in silver and gold. Gold is the most expensive today than it's ever been since 1970 when futures launched in that product. Silver, not quite to that level, but experiencing some of the largest percentage moves that this market has ever seen so large that they haven't seen some of these percentage moves in the last decade. And thankfully, the silver market, like the gold market, and we're going to kind of push gold aside here today for a little bit, um, a lot of data, a lot of data that I could pull on silver to look at past, uh, past cases when we've seen movement like this in silver, because it's been extreme. And if you've just started to trade metals, because you heard about it in the news or whatever, it might be freaking you out a little bit because silver is up 20% in the last week. And that's a feat that it's accomplished two of the last three weeks. And when I pitch it like that, you might think that it's a normal occurrence for silver to move higher by 20%. Uh, and we're going to get to in a second, spoiler alert, it's not. Um, but there are markets that that can do this. You know, you look at single stock markets like uh semiconductors, uh, your NVIDIAs and Microns, those markets can move 20% consistently on a weekly basis. I mean, even as big a companies as uh, Tesla or, or even moving on to something like Amazon has showed us that it can consistently move these huge percentage chunks in weeks followed by weeks followed by weeks. But I'm here to say that this isn't normal for the silver market. <clears throat> this is uh, a this is the most interesting this market's been in the last decade. It might be the most interesting that it's been in the last three decades. You can decide on that, but I'm going to give you a ton of facts here. Uh, and I, I touched on this a little bit earlier, but this is one of those markets that I, I love in futures because it has the historical basis and it has prices that look a lot like all of the prices going back to 2010, going back to 2000, and going back all the way to 1990, which we're going to do here today. Uh, it's not like that NASDAQ or like the S&P 500 or some of those stock indices that, you know, S&Ps are at 3,300. Okay. They've never been at 3,300 uh, in the last decade, two decades, three decades. So there's no real, okay, what does 3,300 mean for the S&P? That conversation's very short because it just means, oh, it's expensive. And in silver, you could say $28 or $29, wherever it is right now, uh, is expensive. But there's historical cases for it having been there. And there are historical cases for these 20% higher moves, but they're rare. Since 1990, silver has only moved 20% higher in a week's time twice prior to recent weeks. That means that the amount of times that silver has moved 20% higher in a week has doubled this last month, going back all the way to 1990. Only two occurrences prior, we added two in the last month of silver moving up by 20%. And 20% isn't some kind of magic number. It's just, I was looking through the data and I was like, huh, we've seen two distinct moves of 20% in the last couple weeks. That seems like a lot. I wonder how often that happens. The answer is twice that that's happened in the last three decades. And uh, we'll see what else happened after those 20% higher moves. But once again, it's not like and you're seeing right now, it's not like you could just sell 20% higher or uh, if silver moves by 15% higher in a week, you buy it and it's got to go to 20. Like it's, it's, it's just a number that we are using here to filter for occurrences to essentially look at uh, in the last month, it seems like there's been two outlier moves here. How often have these outlier moves occurred? And uh, when you think about the fact that, all right, there's 50 about, let's just round it. I know there's 52, but we're going to round it to 50 weeks in a year. You go back the last three decades, that's 1500 weeks of information here and two times in those 1500s, that's a fraction of a fraction of a percentage point that we are we have seen what is currently happening here in silver. And uh, this is what's happened immediately after those historically those historical two occurrences of silver appreciating by 20% in a week. Silver's reversed and it's reversed hard off of those outlier moves. As you can see here in the week following uh, the move in, so 1998, is what we're looking at 2008 and now 2020. 
for these historical 20% moves. And we don't know what's going to happen in the next week or month, but in 1998, silver reversed 4% in the following week and reversed 17% in the following month. Uh, in September of 2008, you can remember some stuff was going on around then, um, reversed 7% and then reversed almost 30% in the following month after this 20% appreciation in silver. So that is all to say that silver historically has reversed off of these outlier moves. And I don't want anyone to get carried away and necessarily think that, oh, well, if this is the third and fourth times that this has happened and the other two times that we've seen this outliers, silver has reversed, then that's a guarantee. It is absolutely by no means a guarantee that silver will reverse. And uh, I mean, you should know that it's not a guarantee by the fact that the most recent outlier, the third of the four occurrences here was met by the fourth of the four occurrences. So uh, now that we have these three historical occurrences, I guess, that we could look back to, you could see that two of the three reversed hard. The third of those three saw the fourth ever 20% rally in a week's time year in silver. And uh, I guess this is to say that there is absolutely not that guarantee, but what I think a lot of people have expected and what I have been a little bit more patient or hesitant on, I guess, whatever, or just scared, I don't know, whatever you want to call it, is um, the fact that this silver market now has done this for the fourth time off of that third. And, and, and I, I think that people are maybe hesitant to sell into this uh, because silver still has a lot of ground to cover to get to those historical highs. As you can see here, um, you know, it's not like we're rallying these these big outlier moves um, at these highs here, like we're seeing in gold, big outlier moves uh, to the upside at the highs in gold. There's still a lot of room that this market could run here. And so I thankfully stayed away from this first uh, rally of 20%. But this is, to me, starting to get into an interesting spot. And especially if you can trade it flexibly, especially if you can trade it uh, with aggressive exits, if the market moves in your favor or against you, that it's, it's almost like a lightning strikes twice scenario where silver could take off to these uh, historical levels of $30, $40, or even 50. But I think it is due for a little bit of a short-term reversal. And notice that I didn't look at the next year or the next you know six months. I just want to say, okay, what what could I get if I sold into this silver market in the next couple of days to a couple of weeks? And I, I think that's the game that you have to, to play here because I, I don't think that silver is necessarily done rising, but I do think that we've just stacked up two outlier events that we, uh, I just said, ha has occurred four weeks of the last 1,500 weeks. And I think that this market could reverse uh, a little bit in the short term. Here's the problem, though, is that if you sold this third occurrence, and maybe even if you sell this fourth and it continues to a fifth 20% week, um, what you lost uh, since that third occurrence was $20,000 in forward slash SI futures. In the micro futures, $4,000, not seeming so micro at a $4,000 uh, appreciation since that uh, first outlier here of 2020. And so that's where I guess the flexibility, the need for flexibility and the need for aggressive exits uh, comes in. And when you stack up a third contender now in the metals market uh, that has been trading just for a few months, but uh, liquidity is, is getting pretty good in this market, only a couple pennies wide. And each of those pennies, thankfully, just equates to a dollar, which means that this market's uh, double outlier move here in small precious metals, which has a huge silver component, has only moved $900 relative to these other big traditional futures uh, contracts. So you're getting those similar outlier moves to me, the same opportunity at a much more manageable cost here. And I would much rather look for the reversal here. And then if I'm wrong, lose a couple hundred dollars, then I mean, lose a couple thousand dollars. And of course, that works on both sides of the coin, right? If this market does reverse like it has 
in uh, in this study that I did here, you would be getting you know four, five, six, whatever percent on that bigger contract. But and, and Pete, I wish he was here to to articulate this because he always talks about you shouldn't when you're entering a futures trade necessarily just look at okay, this is what I want to make on this trade. He has learned through decades of experience that he looks to first, what can I lose on this trade and still be okay? And so while making a couple percentage points on a huge contract like forward slash SI sounds great, can you take a few percentage points in losses on that large contract? And and that's where the conversation comes to forward slash SPRE because we've seen this huge rise uh, of... I think it was July 20, uh, maybe like July 18th or something that the ra- the first rally hit. And then now the second rally hitting uh, here, I think it was like the last day of July trading now going into the first couple of days of August. Um, the same percentage moves, very similar percentage moves in forward like, uh, slash SPRE, the same outliers, moves that we've never seen in this contract uh uh, for sure, because it's only existed for a couple of months. But even going back, testing the index data for the last few years, never seen these outlier moves in forward slash SPRE. But once again, a more manageable cost, you know, and and this is where the flexibility comes in in the contract. And then also being aggressive, like I said, on those exits. I am not of the 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 kind of trader. I mean, anyone can do whatever they want, but I'm not the type of trader who's saying, okay, this market has rallied. 40% in the last couple of weeks. And we see historically these sell-offs of, uh, you know, five, six, 7% in the short term, and then 20 to 30% in the long term. I'm going to take all 20 to 30% of that sell-off. No, I'm more someone who's willing to take a couple percentage points here, lose a couple percentage points there. And so setting those aggressive exits by saying, okay, SPRE is up $900 since that first 20% rally. I'm willing to sell into this and only give myself about $200 on both sides. I think that's a totally cool, viable strategy. The problem uh, enters when you say, I- I'll take $200 or $300 in profits, but I'll let this thing run to wherever. Because as we've shown, silver still only at about $28, $29 right now has historically gotten as high as $50. So this SPRE contract could be brought higher from that silver piece. But with all that being said, we don't see these outlier moves stack up very often. I am willing to bet against a third week here of 20% movement to the upside. And I am of the thinking that this is a a pretty cool trade here in SPRE uh, while trading uh, silver in that piece uh, going back the last decade, something we have not seen.